All right, this is fourth grade, module one, lesson 13. And in this lesson, uh, students are going to be using the standard algorithm for subtracting whole numbers. However, in the lesson itself, teachers, you guys are going to be asked to use the place value disks, the number disks in the place value chart, to make sense of the standard algorithm that students are learning because we don't want them to just memorize the rule. We want them to understand that when we're borrowing, uh, that there's something specific that's going on. It's not some magic that's going on. And plus, we're going to be doing some representing that subtraction in some tape diagrams. So let's get started. All right, this is saying that we're supposed to use the standard algorithm to solve this subtraction problem. Now, before I use the standard algorithm, parents and teachers, I want to show you what it would look like if we were to use those number disks to represent the subtraction. Then, once I've done that, then we'll go and, and do that traditional standard algorithm. So we're going to begin with place value chart. And let me label that ones, tens, and teachers, by the way. Uh, don't give your students a pre-filled out place value chart. Make them constantly, constantly uh, practice filling out that place value chart. And then I'm going to model. And we're going to begin by modeling 2,431. And I'm going to do that fairly quickly. 2,400. 31. And uh, I want you to note that I was going up and down on purpose because what I was doing was creating a 10 frame. And I go up and down to create my 10 frame. So I would have done, if I had more than this, I would have gone 5 here and then I would have started a new column right next door to ultimately create groups of 10, right? So I've modeled 200, uh, 2,431 and now it's time for us to uh, subtract. Now, the first way over here, now, technically, when you're using a place value chart, you can subtract left to right or right to left or, or from the inside out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but because we are guiding students towards the standard algorithm, I'm going to go from right to left because that's the standard algorithm. And so when I look over here at the right, it says to start with 1-1 one, one and take away one of the ones. Well, that means we have enough, right? So I'm going to take away one, one, and what are we left with? We're left with a big old fat nothing, all right? So in the standard algorithm, that would look like this. Uh, we go over here, one, take away one, gives us zero, all right? So now we're going to move to the next column over, and it says three tens take away four tens. Well, if you have three tens and you're supposed to take away four of them, well, you can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these hundreds and we're going to cash it in for ten tens. So cash it in for ten tens. It's going to look like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so that means because we've cashed in this hundred for ten tens, that means he no longer exists. He's gone because we regrouped him, cashed him in for 10 over here. So now in our tens column, instead of having 3, we now have 13. And instead of in our hundreds column, instead of having 4 in our hundreds column, we now have 3. So I'm going to cross off this 4 and make it a 3. So what we did, going backwards, had 3 was not big enough to take away 4, so we took one of these hundreds, cashed it in, so that means we only have 3 hundreds left over, and we cashed it in for 10. So we now have 13 tens instead of just 3 tens. And so it says, with those 13 tens, take away 4. Well, that's pretty easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, and that gives us a remainder of 9. We have 9 left over. And so sure enough, over here in our standard algorithm, 13 minus 4 is 9. So now in the hundreds column, it says we have 3 hundreds, take away 3 hundreds. So that gives us, over here, 3 hundreds, take away 3 hundreds. 1, 2, 3. That leaves us with no hundreds left over. And so over here in our standard algorithm, 3 hundreds, take away 3 hundreds is 0 hundreds. And then the last, this is pretty straightforward, you have two thousands, take away nothing. 
So that's going to leave you with the original 2000s. And sure enough, 2000s take away nothing, leaves you with those 2000s. So what's our answer? It's right here. It's 2090. And sure enough, that's exactly what we have over here. Now let me do that standard algorithm again, only this time it'll be uninterrupted. Uh, because initially what I had done is I was kind of bouncing back and forth between the place value and the standard algorithm back and forth, and that might be confusing for students. So <clears throat> let me do that standard algorithm uh, uninterrupted. So 1, 1, take away 1, 1 gives us 0, 1s because we've subtracted. We have 3 tens take away 4 tens, which we cannot do. So I'm going to regroup one of these hundreds, leaving us with 3 left over, for 10 tens, which means instead of having 3 tens, we're now going to have 13. We're going to give them 10 of them. And then 13 tens take away 4 tens, leaves us with 9 tens. 3 hundreds take away 3 hundreds, leaves us with 0 hundreds. And two thousands, take away no thousands, leaves us with two thousands. And our answer is 2,090. Now one of the things I want you to notice earlier, I said, hey, we have three tenths, three, take away four. Oh, you can't do that. Well, yes, you can do three, take away four. Three, take away four is negative one. But that's down the road. In this context, this is saying I have three tens, three dots, take away four dots, tens. And in this context, we are going to say you can't do that uh, because we're talking about, I don't know, maybe physical. It's a different context. So I feel comfortable as a mathematician saying three take away four, you can't do. It's okay as long as students understand why we're saying that. It's because we're talking about dots. All right, I chose this problem because it asks students to draw a tape diagram. And uh, parents and teachers, you might be unfamiliar with tape diagrams, and that might cause a little anxiety. So I thought I would show you um, what a tape diagram looks like in this context. And, and of course, there is no one way to properly draw a tape diagram. So I might, so I might show you a couple of examples here. So it says, what number must be added to 14,056 to result in a sum of 38,773. So one way a student might draw this would say, well, I'm drawing two numbers. So here's a tape that represents one number. Here's another tape that represents the other number. And the first number, we are told, is 14,056. And then it says, what number must be added to 14,056 to result in a sum of 38,773. So this 38,773 is the entire length right here. So that entire length is 38,773. And then that tells us that it's this length right here we don't know. That's the what number must be added. So we have two numbers, one here, one here. Their entire length is 38,773. We know one of them. So what kind of math are we going to do to get this missing value? Well, we're going to use subtraction. This is kind of parents and teachers. This is the classic part, part, whole that kids have been doing since second grade. Now that's one way we could have drawn it. Another way we could have drawn it is we could have said, okay, first and second, and we are told that we don't know what the first number is because it says what number must be added. And then the second number, we are told what it is. I'm just going to kind of draw it arbitrarily that length. And that's 14,056. And then we're told that the entire length is 38,773. 38, so we got two different styles of drawing our tape diagrams. This, I, I tend to call this side by side. And this, I call it stacked. It doesn't matter which tape diagram your students prefer. They both work. 
Um, although sometimes some questions lend themselves to one style versus another, but they always work. And then, of course, both of these models tell the student to subtract. So 38,773, subtract 14,056. Teachers, make sure your students are lining, stacking these up really nicely. I have a suggestion for that in a little bit. Um, and then with subtraction, it's using that standard algorithm. Three ones, take away six ones, you can't do. So we've got to go over here and regroup one of these tens, leaving us with six tens. It means instead of having three ones, we'll now have 13 ones. And 13 ones subtract six ones is seven ones. And then six tens take away five tens is one ten. Seven hundreds take away no hundreds is leaves seven hundreds. And then eight thousands take away four thousands leaves us with four thousands. And lastly, three ten thousands take away one ten thousands leaves us with two ten thousands. So our missing value is 24,717. Now one of the ways that we can differentiate this, teachers, is uh, students sometimes, uh, I, yeah, students sometimes have a really hard time stacking these numbers. So one way you can handle that is to give students a piece of graph paper. But graph paper is a little on the expensive side. So another way you could handle that is you could give your students uh, some traditional lined paper. All right, so I'm going to kind of represent what traditional lined paper looks like. And, and there's your traditional lined paper. And of course, here's the margin, all right? And then, oh, I got to do the dots. Okay, there's a dot, there's a dot, and there's a dot. And what you can do is you can give them a piece of lined paper and then tell them to rotate it on its side, and all of a sudden you have these beautiful columns that students can do their, keep track of their numbers. And so in this case, they would write um, 38773 subtract 14056. Six. So you'll notice that lined paper is keeping everything nice and s structured, nice and neatly. All right, the last problem, I'm going to just show you the tape diagram. I don't think I need to show you the standard algorithm for subtraction. because It's the tape diagram that I think is causing uh, adults the most concern. So we've got an elementary school collecting has uh, an elementary school collected 1,705 bottles. So I'm going to underline that because that seems like it's important. A high school also collected some bottles, and both schools collected 3,672 bottles combined. So one way to draw this, I'll do it the separate the stacked one. You've got the elementary school and you've got the high school. And the elementary school collected some bottles. And the high school collected some bottles. All right. Now, I happen to draw the tapes the exact same length, and that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be proportional. And it, let's go back to the question. It says an elementary school collected 1,705 bottles. So that tells me I can label this 1,705. All right. And then... I'm going to continue reading, and it says a high school also collected some bottles. Both schools collected 3,627 bottles combined. So this tells us that both schools collected 3,627 combined, and so that automatically tells us that that suggests that the high school, we don't know. And sure enough, if we go back and read, it says, a high school collected some bottles, but it doesn't tell us how many. So here is one example of what that tape diagram might look like. Another way it might look like is the side-by-side. -side. Here's the elementary school. Here's the high school. We know the elementary school is 1,705. We know the combined length is 3,627 and the high school is a big old fat question mark. So we have two different styles of tape diagrams, and they both work just fine on this problem. And of course, they both are classic 
type diagrams that tell the students you need to subtract to get the answer. And that wraps up fourth grade module one, lesson 13, where students in the lesson itself were using place value understanding to really understand that standard algorithm. And then we did some practicing with tape diagrams.